Okay, let's go to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida for questions, please. Uh, yes, this is Marcia Dunn of the Associated Press. Um, Ron, I have a written report from earlier in this flight that there was a potential for a large damage area to the tile, and given that, I'm wondering how and why was it deemed, na uh, deemed minor by NASA? And do you have any idea how much of a damage area may have been left on the left wing and how big that piece of foam was that came off? We have a pretty good idea how big the size of foam was. Uh, what we don't understand very well was what the actual impact did to the tile. And so we have to use our analysis and uh, our engineering expertise to help us understand how a piece of foam of certain weight and density impacting the wing at certain velocity, what it does to the tile. And our experts gathered together, and we've, we have people in this system that have worked on these tiles since the beginning of the program, and we understand how the tiles function, we understand the tile's ability to withstand damage, we understand the thermal characteristics of the tile both on the surface of the tile and at the base of the tile. And as we, as we got together and reviewed this information, we were convinced technically and analytically that the tile would not, the, the impact of the debris on the tile would not represent a safety of flight issue. In fact, we were anxious to come back and get the, the handheld film that the crew takes as soon as they get to orbit uh, of the external tank as it's moving away. We asked them to take pictures of the external tank so we can understand exactly where the foam was shed from the tank. And we were anxious to get that piece of information because we felt that we needed to analyze it so that it would not occur on future flights. We, we have a flight readiness review coming up for the next flight. Uh, it was scheduled for February the 20th, and we knew we had some technical work to do to make sure that uh, we understood why this piece of debris came off. We were not concerned with Columbia. We felt we had analyzed that, and we felt we uh, uh, understood it such that it was not a thermal concern to us, did not represent a control issue or a safety of flight issue. And I, again, I'm going to caution you that, um, that that is the case today. We have no information that would say that is not the case. We are going to go look at it again uh, to see if there is a connection between what Milt talked to you about and the fact that we had a debris impact on the tile. Uh, and there's some other things we need to go look at. The tile is just one. And, and so uh, we are satisfied that we did the proper work. Uh, and across the community, our safety, our quality, our crew members, our flight controllers, and the program management reviewed the technical analysis and agreed to a person that it was not an impact to this flight. And so we need to go back and look at that, of course. But that's the events as they unfolded. Hitler from Florida today. I, uh, I'm sorry to ask another question about the external tank, but has this happened before? Has foam come off the tank? Has it impacted the shuttle? And what were the consequences that you saw? We, we had an ev event on STS-112 just uh, several flights ago where a piece of debris from the same general area was shed by the tank. And this particular debris, and, and I can't tell you today whether it's of the same general size, but it, but it came from the same general area. And uh, it impacted the, uh, the aft skirt on one of the boosters. Uh, superficial damage occurred. When we got the booster back in port and looked at it, evaluated it, um, reviewed it technically, discussed it at the following flight readiness review, which was STS-13. We as an agency, as a shuttle program, uh, decided that that did not represent a technical safety risk to us. Uh, we have from time to time uh, debris. Ice can come off the tank. Um, uh, frost, pieces of debris, and they impact the bottom of the vehicle. Uh, 
several years ago, we had we had a, a problem where we were, as we were uh, during the launch phase, we were uh, popcorning pieces of this insulation on the tile. It would effectively reach a certain point in the ascent, and it would popcorn out and impact the bottom of the vehicle, and it would cause damage to the tile, but not damage that was a concern from a safety standpoint, damage that when we got back, we had to repair or maybe replace the tile. We have subsequently fixed that problem, and as we were looking at this particular problem of uh, debris shedding in this one bipod region on STS-112, uh, we said, well, we've got an area that we need to fix, and we have a turnaround discussion, but not a safety of flight issue. We flew STS-113. We didn't shed any external tank debris. On STS-107, as we looked at the films on the following day, we saw the same type of debris being shed from the same location. In this case, it didn't impact the booster. It impacted the left wing. So again, two occurrences in the last three flights is certainly the signal to our team that something has changed. It did not represent on the first occasion uh, an alarm from a safety point of view. It represented a turnaround processing issue. As we go forward in our investigation, we're certainly going to look in this area and, and determine whether or not this was a contributor to the loss of Columbia and the loss of the crew. This is Mike Cabbage with the Orlando Sentinel. Ron, could you talk a little about who all and what all was involved in the analysis of the tile issue after launch? Did you ever give any thought to using telescopes to look for signs of damage to the orbiter? And if you had detected um, extensive damage to the TPS, is there anything you could have done with the angle of attack or anything else uh, during reentry to have reduced stress on that part of the vehicle? The easy part of that question is there's nothing that we can do about tile damage once we get to orbit. <clears throat> we can't minimize the heating to the point that it, that it would somehow uh, not require a tile. And so once you get to orbit, you're there and you have your tile insulation and uh, that's, that's all you have for protection on the way home from the extreme thermal heating during reentry. Um, we have experience in the past of uh, having events that have occurred that, have occurred that, would, that we have assessed using other assets to maybe get a close-up look at uh, the bottom of the orbiter. Recall uh, a year or two ago, we lost the drag chute door uh, right at liftoff. It fell off, and uh, we actually tried to take some pictures of the back end of the vehicle to see what was really there so that we can understand our thermal heating in that case. And those pictures that we received were not very useful to us. So that was part of our background. Combine that, our feeling that we didn't believe the pictures would be very useful to us, with the fact that there was not much, there was zero that we could do about it. And in this case, we elected not even to take the pictures. We believed that our technical analysis was sufficient. We couldn't do anything about it anyway. We were in the best possible position. And so we elected not to take any pictures from any other sources, and that's the way that played out. Uh, Ron and Milt, this is Craig Cavalt with Aviation Week. I'm trying to understand, uh, especially at the first event, the 753 event, specifically where those sensors are located uh, relative to the, the wing structure or the main body structure. Can you Describe that in a little more detail. Yeah, th they were located at the left inboard elevon and the left outboard elevon. And, and recall, the elevons are at the back part of the wing. They're the trailing edge of the wing. And the impact, if you were trying to relate tile damage to the elevon, the impact was, of course, on the front edge of the wing. Uh, you, c you can't draw any conclusions from this yet. We can't. Um, it's just data that we need to go pour over and understand uh, if you looked at the sequence of events, Craig, you would see that our first indication was left inboard out, left outboard, which is the trailing edge of the wing. 
The next indication was um, left main gear wheel well, which was, it's like it's moving forward toward the front of the wing. But that doesn't mean anything at this point because how we lost the sensors was it looks like we just cut the wires. It could be that the wires were being lost at some other location, not on the trailing edge of the wing. And so we've got to piece all this together. There's, we, we can't say today that there is some significance that the indication started at the trailing edge of the wing and worked themselves forward. We can't say that. Just like we can't say that a debris impact on the front of the wing, a tile, is any reason to conclude that we lost the vehicle. It's just information that needs to be factored in with a lot of other evidence and analysis. Lots more work to do.